Before we dive into today's episode, I've got an invitation for you. Your cycle is your superpower. Don't we know it? But are you honoring your cycle, body and energy as much as you could? Many of you I know are super interested in charting your cycle and using your changing nature to support you in each season, in life, relationships and your work. But here's the thing, are you actually putting what you know works into practice regularly? Would you love to have a map forwards to work more creatively with more freedom, pleasure and self-confidence by properly embodying your cycle day to day? Join me for a free, yes I said free, sacred women's circle for a gathering of like-minded souls to go deeper into cycle awareness and receive a lesson from me on how your business can skyrocket by harnessing your cycle and how you can support your mindset and creativity to show up powerfully and confidently across your cycle. Yes, even in those moments when your inner critic and self-doubt gets the better of you, you'll receive a workbook and an overview of my signature creative cauldron process to take and implement straight away and much more. You're invited to a free sacred gathering to experience your cycle and your superpower with me, Charlotte Pronto, Tuesday, 31st of May. Places are limited. You can grab the registration link in my show notes. See you there, beautiful. Now on to today's episode. Something that really supports me is that ever-present trust and faith of how I'm showing up in the world today is how I'm meant to show up in the world today. I absolutely prefer being a CEO when I'm in the mid part of my cycle. I come off client calls and I'm like, killed it. Amazing. That coaching, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, And, you know, I absolutely come off calls uh, at other parts of my cycle where I go, okay, that didn't necessarily feel like my best work. But knowing that I'm human, knowing that I'm a cyclical being, knowing that that is part of my magic allows me to to always just view it as I just trust that this is the energy that is most meant to be exuded out into the world today. Welcome to the Wildflow Podcast with me, Charlotte Pronto, certified cycle and feminine embodiment coach and shamanic womb guide. In this podcast, I'll share my wisdom and conversations with powerful change makers, thought leaders and embodied teachers to invite you to live cyclically in flow with your menstrual cycle instead of fearing it, to heal menstrual shame and normalize womb wisdom and period positivity and to step into your sovereign magnetic power to create and embody the change you desire to see in your world. Settle in to unleash your wild flow. Today I'm bringing on my business coach, Ellie Swift, for a conversation all about how our cycles affect how we run our businesses. And in this episode, Ellie's sharing things that she's not shared publicly before. I love this conversation about how our menstrual cycles affect us in showing up in our business, about really embodying our CEO mindset and that leadership within our our businesses, as well as how we show up for clients and how we are structuring businesses running lives, living as multi-passionate women um, who, you know, I have children, um, we both have puppies, um, we both are married and we both really value um, adventure and freedom and kind of spaciousness to honour ourselves and what we need as you, you will hear in this conversation. So this is really for people who are um, running their own business, especially Um, especially if you are looking at running your business to support you, not just from, not just financially, but to live the way, the life that you really want to live and to feel the way you really want to feel in that life. So this is a beautiful episode for you with Ellie Swift, who is a business mentor for high performing women who are ready to build soul led, intentional and profitable online businesses. Using her signature Swift marketing method, Ellie helps coaches, creatives, and consultants connect with their customers, 
to shine online and create life-changing results for themselves and their clients. Ellie spent a decade working in marketing in London, Sydney and Perth, achieving her goal of head of marketing strategy by the age of 28 before making the transition into her business that she runs now. So over the last four and a half years, she has built a seven-figure business and has supported her clients to build six multi six and seven figure businesses tripled their income and completely transformed their business and lives using mindset marketing and strategy. Ellie's mission is to support soul led women to experience the lives they dream of through entrepreneurship. So make yourself a, a cuppa and get ready for a gorgeous conversation about how our menstrual cycles affect our CEO mindset. Welcome to Wildflow, Ellie Swift. How are you? I'm really well, thank you. So, so happy to be here. Oh, I'm so happy you're here and I'm so looking forward to this conversation. Um, Let's begin with, how are you today? I am really well. I, I just had a bunch of tech challenges before I got on this call. And so when I'm answering that question and sitting with how I feel, I'm like, I feel really good. And there's like a 1% irritation because I've just navigated tech challenges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you try and shake it off, but it's still there. And you're like, oh, tech. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. And so let's take that another le- level deeper as well. If you're happy to share um, a cycle check-in as I love to do, because I think it's so cool to see where we're at in our cycles and how we're both feeling and how like whether we're on the same kind of page or completely different opposite poles and just so everyone can hear and perhaps feel into how that affects how we show up today which is going to be really um an important part of this conversation in itself so I will go first I'm on cycle day oh seven (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, like is it seven or eight am I on seven yeah seven today so yes. I finished bleeding a couple of days ago and I'm just feeling in that transition out of like I'd say deep rest that's where I wanted to be this period but it really wasn't how it ended up because I've just had sick kids for the last week with croup and gastro and um just ugh. so it's been uh, not not a good time of coming back to myself and taking that rest and that space and just kind of dropping into it. I've been very much um, on, I guess, and holding the space for them. And I also did an event on Saturday, which always seems to coincide with my period. Like I do not schedule it that to, to be that way. It just falls yeah. that way. I'm like, oh, but you know, it was lovely. I really kind of honored where I was at with that. And were you know transparent because it was um a first moon circles talking about periods with children so I was like role modeling that but also just didn't put much pressure on myself to be full on or anything so today I feel like I'm I can definitely feel this rising energy in me and like this kind of little bit of excitement and like ooh, what's gonna come this cycle but still like my brain feels a bit foggy um I feel a bit mentally slow today just with all the things that I've been kind of juggling and not having that rest time I think has impacted my emergence out the other side of that Mm -hmm. so for me that's yeah that's my check-in and Mm -hmm. if you have a cycle um are you happy to share with us where you're at and how that feels for you today Um, And if you don't have a cycle, just how you're feeling today. Yes. So I'm on day 22 and day 22 for me is usually like a a really great day because I, I tend to really feel and experience my inner autumn, not until around like day 25, day 26. So I feel like I've got a lot of energy and I actually, my, my cycle I feel a little disconnected to my cycle because I've just had the spicy cough, which we were just talking about. 
And so, you know, the, my days, my day seven to like 20 is usually so on, you know, I'm, I'm really, my, my personality is very on type A. And so that season of my cycle is there's a lot of output happening, a lot of productivity, a lot of energy. And I haven't had the opportunity to, to do that this cycle Mm. because I've been in such a season of rest um, because I've been hit quite hard with this cough and I really, really honored that season of rest, knowing that my naturopath was like, if you don't rest, your chances of long C go up by like, you know, so I had the fear of death in me. And so I'm so well rested that I think I feel extra good in this moment, but also um, just like an awareness of like a lingering virus. So uh, that is a very multi-layered answer, but usually day 22 is like a really, really good, good day for me. Mm. Love that. Thank you for sharing. Love how you know, like how that day is for you normally and then the difference between like what's just what you've just been through and your body's been through and the fact that you were able to take that rest and then how it's supporting you now on the other side. And also I love what you said in there about your personality type and how that affects your experience of your cycle as well because I'm, I can be like that. I have moments of, of like type A, like, but then I, I guess kind of on the, that's perhaps not my natural, like that high energy isn't my natural state of being. So I'm a bit more kind of lower energy anyway. Perhaps that's the season of life I'm in as well, where I just constantly <laughs> chronically exhausted mother. Um, but yeah, so when I get that kind of in a summer, like higher energy ovulation kind of productive vibes it feels really fun but it doesn't last and then I sort of come back to that kind of like more mellow kind of vibe which I guess is like my it feels like my default at the minute so I just love that distinction of how personality type plays into it as well so much awareness in there thank you Mm. so would you say you have that's your favorite time of your cycle that mid part I love this question. Yeah, I I love when I'm ovulating in the middle of my cycle, I just feel like I can take on the world. I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh, you are radiating and you can just do everything and you are charming and glorious. And, you know, I, I really, really feel that in that season. Like I, I feel um, I feel very connected to my natural state of being. Um, and, you know, if anyone's listening to this and, and they know, know me in any way. And Charlotte, obviously, you know me. Um, I, I am, my natural state of being is being in joy. Like when I'm, when I'm joyful, it feels very truthfully myself. Mm. Uh, and so I do feel very me during that time. That said, something that I've worked on over the years is finding the, the most me components of every phase of my cycle. So for example, as a type A Virgo at the start of my cycle, I can often feel a little bit of like a, let's just get moving. Let's get things happening. And so something that I connect really well to during that part of my cycle is allowing myself time and space to, to plan and articulate what I want to, to come next in my life and in my work and really honor that season of planning and forecasting and and looking forward rather than being in action. And when I'm in my autumn and when I'm bleeding, I know that I am so incredibly intuitive. And even though um, I I come across incredibly extroverted, I'm like 52% introvert on the Myers-Briggs scale. So I, I am very inward. I am very reflective and I like a lot of time alone. And so, you know, one of my favorite things to do is write and go deeper and connect within. And so I tend to use that part of my cycle to really, um, to really tap into that part of who I am. And so just to kind of wrap that in a bow, I would say that I'm definitely my most me right mm-hmm. smack bang in the middle, but there's different components of me that I get to to play with that I get to wear different hats that I get to put on at every single stage Mm, love that so much finding different parts of you in each part of the cycle and just welcoming that version of you at that particular time and 
yes. inviting her to play and bring her gifts, whatever they may be as they change. That's just gorgeous. Yes. Yeah, I, I feel like, um, oh, so just before I ask you, before we move on, I just, is there a time of your cycle that you're like, is less your favorite that you're like, oh, here we go, like challenge coming? Yeah, look, I the couple of days before I bleed, my inner critic gets really loud. Mm. Um, and that's why I've really, that, that kind of created this process for me of looking at the blessings during that time, which is that I'm so intuitive during that time. But with that intuition comes a lot of self-criticism. And so, you know, I have to be so mindful that I might, for example, during that time go, okay, this thing in my business is really not working for me right now. I need to scrap it. I need to do it over. I need to do something different with it. Um, And, you know, that might be an intuitive hit. That might be something that I know I need to do, but I might also have a voice that says, you've been doing it terribly for this X amount of time. How could, how dare you have done it this way? You know, you, why haven't you fixed it immediately? Why aren't you changing it right this second? You can't share that with, you know, like just all the stories that then come with that intuitive hit rather than just allowing it to be what it is and knowing that, you know, everything is perfect as is in this moment in time. And so I do have to really check myself just before I bleed. Um, I know that my body, it's that feeling of like my body's trying to hold on and not releasing, Mm -hmm. not allowing itself to fully, to fully rest. And that's really been a lot of my lessons in this lifetime in relationship to my body. You know, I, as we've talked about, have no problem going and moving and doing and thriving from that space more of my lessons are around releasing and resting and slowing down. And I definitely feel like I'm in a season of my life where I've connected to that so much more, but I have to consciously go there. I have to consciously slow down. Uh, The amount of times where I bleed on a Sunday is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Like it's like my body truly needs to stop before I can bleed. Mm. Um, and so, you know, it, it's just an interesting season for me that that time of my cycle. Yeah. So it's like your body's going like, we're putting on the brakes. Like I need you <laughs> to like come into this slower energy before I can like feel safe to release almost. It's like that kind exactly. of, um, you know, with like, I'm really hearing you like comfortable in this outward and like you embrace the inwards, but like you have to kind of really talk yourself into it or sort of, I guess, just ease yourself in gently is what it sounds like. Exactly. And yeah, knowing that that's something that I have to do. I know for some people they can blink and they get their period, you know, it's almost like, oh, what? My period's here already. How did that happen? Um, For me, it always, it always seems like it's so much more conscious Mm. for me. Like, oh, I'm about to bleed. I need to slow. Yeah. That's gorgeous. I have that too. I've Mm. had, um, uh, my cycle's like a bit irregular at the minute with breastfeeding. And so I haven't really been able to kind of predict you know like how some people it's like clockwork every time and it's kind of like um you know you can sync your life and your business around it I can't really do that it's sort of like let's just see what happens this month so when I get to the point of like oh like I think I ovulated on this at this time so looking forwards I think my period's gonna come then I sort of try to prepare myself for that and like factor in like slowing down and all the rest but sometimes I've got things scheduled in because I'm not anticipating it to be then and so it's more of a like okay what do I need to do to allow myself to really drop into that and it's sort of like when I do when my period does come I'm like oh thank god for that it feels like such a a release for sure and 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 a relief Um, and I just really love that, that slowness and that kind of handing everything over and like, ah, I'm just not going to think about it for now for a few days and get some more support off, fill my husband with the kids and things like that. And, um, yeah, I can actually have a bit of a challenge coming out the other side and it's a little bit like where I've been at in the last few days. It's like, 
getting back into that go energy. Sometimes like I can tell I'm not quite ready and I feel like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Like, even though I absolutely love my work and what I do, it's sort of this energy of like, oh, I just am really enjoying this rest. Like, can this just carry on a little bit longer, please? Yeah. Before I feel like I can come out of it. And, and I love hearing you say that because isn't it so interesting? Like, you know, knowing that we obviously both have, for anyone that's listening who does have a business, like we obviously both have businesses that, um, you know, you're doing such amazing work in the world. And I think it's just so useful to, for people that are listening to hear, you can have such a different relationship to energy. You can have such a different relationship to your cycle than the person sitting next to you. And the key to allowing yourself to thrive in your life and work is to really harness it and understand what it's going to look like for you. Cause I'm the same as you. I've never had a clockwork cycle. That's just never been my reality. And so I've never, ever been able to schedule things to the letter. And I think that that's been a really good lesson for me because as a Virgo, my tendency is to want to control. Yeah. I really see that. Yeah. That (laughs) lesson, like that, that, um, contrast. Totally. And so it's really positive that that's my reality. It's like my cycle for sure is, is a really deep way for me to connect to my body and know that I can't predict things necessarily. And so I have to tune in and that practice of tuning in supports me in so many areas of my life. Um, But yeah, not being able to predict is, is a blessing for me. And so if there is anyone that's listening that also does not have a clockwork cycle and you're like, I want to know when it's coming. I want to be able to plan things like know that you can do all the things and make things happen without knowing and you will make it work. Absolutely. Thank you for that. That's a really cool point. Let's jump into this a bit more because you are a freaking legend. So you have, um, you've come from corporate and you are a life coach and a business coach now specifically. And um, how many years is it since you left corporate? It's been four and a bit. And I say that it, Ellie? Oh my God forget often I, I should really know this I, every time I get asked on a podcast I forget I need to like write it down somewhere so I don't <laughs> interviews but yeah about four and a bit that's incredible that blows my mind because what you've achieved in that time is just it's 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 mind-blowing I it's so um you've you have basically left corporate done your life coach training. I don't know if you did that one after the other or same time. Um, you have grown an epic business, um, which, you know, you have like a full like team, you have an empire, you support, I don't know, you must support hundreds and hundreds of women, um, in just four and a half years. And you're also a life coach trainer with beautiful you. You're, you're part of that team as well. So you're just doing amazing work. And I think I really want to invite you to just share on like, what are your, what are your key values Mm. and how have you really brought that into your business? You know, you just talked about when, you know, life is, is not predictable and I know how much you value like really being able to show up for your clients and, you know, really tuning into your CEO mindset as well but you are doing really cool stuff and really leading on it about how you're inviting people into their brilliance to support you. So you can kind of like, you're not hustling at all. Like tell us about what your values are and how you have kind of brought them into the spotlight, I guess, you know, like how you're centering them in your business to support you. Yes. Okay. So In terms of my values, I'll just speak to some that are universal because I've got a bunch of like personal values and then I've got business values, but I'll speak to the ones that are really synonymous across both. So um, for me, I really value um, adventure. I value family. I value connection. uh, I value uh, communication. I value bravery and doing the thing. I value bravery. I can't remember if I said that already. (laughs) I value everything. Uh, So they're they're the ones that kind of come up for me first and foremost. Um, But in terms of the way that I want to live my life, I really value uh, 
doing great work. I value creativity so much. I value freedom. I value creating, uh, making a difference in the world, like making an impact and supporting and serving is, is huge for me and my whole reason for being in my work. Um, and so because I have such a strong professional why, but I've also got a really strong personal why, you know, I'm, there are some people in entrepreneurship that are doing this to change the world and that is their sole mission. And I respect that for me, I have a lot of meaning and purpose in my personal life as well. I have a very close family. I have friends that I've had in my life since I was a child that are so dear to me. Loyalty is really something that's really important to me, as you know. Um, That's why I like working with clients over long periods of time and really building those relationships. Um, And so for me, building my business, it always needed to be something where I could fulfill my mission, but do so in a way that still did not sacrifice my personal life. And don't get me wrong, when I was at the early stages of building my business, there were trade-offs. You know, I I had a season where I saw my friends less, where I was spending less time with my now husband and and all of those things. I think it's really important to share that because as you know, early stages of business require trade-offs, require hard work that doesn't necessarily have to be hustling. I would never say that I was hustling. I was taking really inspired action a lot to build my business. But I knew that longer term, I always wanted to have a business that supported me. So I wasn't tied to my desk at all times, but that I could still create the impact that I wanted to create. And so something that I've I've done is yes, build out a team, which obviously you see so much, Um, you know, we have an incredible, incredible team and the values that we have within our team to be able to serve our clients so well is that we are very open and honest and we communicate a lot. So one of the core values within Swift Ventures is communicate, communicate, communicate. Uh, And so specifically said three times, because I say to my team, if you're unsure, just over communicate it anyway. Like it would, it's better that it be said than you go, oh, I didn't know that I was supposed to share that, you know, like over communicate always. Um, Another specific value that we have is be brave and be curious. And so what that means is, you know, we're all stepping up, we're all um, taking inspired action, we're all being really brave in our work and we're always looking at it through the lens of curiosity and excitement and joy. And I like to think that within our team, there is a real openness. You know, my team can talk to me about anything. We're really excited, really inspired. Every win is a team win. And so we have touch points constantly talking about um, all of the ways in which things are exciting and what's happening and what we're working on. Um, And so I really believe that in terms of the culture that we've built for women to be able to all thrive, it's one where it's been built around a lot of safety and a lot of opportunity to really communicate where you're at. So if one of my team are sick, if one of my team are having an off day, they're allowed to share that and not feel like they're going to be punished yeah, that because they never would be, you know. And so, so, and you know, within that as well, obviously, I work with with women who are navigating things like having children and um, you know going through seasons of maternity leave and running businesses while they've got you know multiple children and and big seasons of life. And I just always want it to all be welcomed in in my business and in my work. And that's something that I think about a lot and and try and really create. I feel like I may have taken this question really off course, but, um, you know, just, just to no. kind of come back to that initial, initial question, uh, the, the biggest thing that I'm always trying to do is serve and create in a way that allows me to flow, allows me to show up for both my business and my personal life. And that requires a lot of intentionality. So I'm always playing with my schedule. I'm always playing with how I can best serve and support our people, knowing that the best way for me to do that is with extra help as well. There's no way I could serve in the way that we serve without extra help. And I know that I'm really proud of what we've created. When I look at our masterminds now, I'm like, oh, you know, because of team, we've got this 360 approach, you know? Um, and so just, just knowing that it, it's a constant work in progress, it's a constant ebb and flow. It's a constant flux of like, this is working really well. This isn't working really well. And just honoring what 
I need as a woman and what I need as a CEO to really be able to thrive. And sometimes what I need as a woman, a human and a CEO are the same. And sometimes they're really different and just, just allowing myself to constantly play in that. Mm. Incredible answer. Thank you. Thank you for sharing so much. Uh, there's just so much in there that I'm like, oh, like I love being able to hear that as somebody who's worked with you for the last year, um, pretty much um, as well. And being one of the people that you serve and seeing, you know, I'm in the experience, but kind of having that snapshot, that little window into how you uh, communicate with and empower and, you know, lead your team is really inspiring because I think for a lot of people who, you know, might be women who are running their own business as well, I think, you know, taking on any team can be really intimidating at first of, you know, like, what if, what if, what if, what if it's not right? What if I can't make it happen? What if they're not any good? What if I can't lead? What, like, just so many what ifs there could possibly be. And hearing you just being like, we're, we're human first, we're women first, and we have, um, we're friends as well. I'm hearing, you know, I, I see that in you as well and celebrating each other, supporting each other, honoring where you're all at as individuals, as well as a team. Um, and I just really hear that you're, you know, you're not coming in this going like, I've got to have all my shit figured out and I've got to like, you know, be like, everything's fine. And I'm in control. It's like, I, I sense this softness in it of like, we're playing, we're experimenting, like we're trying things on, you're open to creativity and um, new ways of doing things. And that flexibility that, like you say, like, we just, we just need us at this time in the world, at this time in life and just, you know, being who we are and really honoring that. And that just feels really, um, like just the sense that I'm really getting from you. Does that feel true? It does feel true. And I'll give you an example of how that plays out practically. So for example, as you know, last week I had the spicy cough as I've talked about Mm -hmm. (laughs) in the intro. Uh, And I had this thought of like, oh, I'm so fortunate that I've got support coaches and, you know, basically nothing needs to change in terms of how our clients are getting supported. And I'm so grateful for that. And I was just in gratitude, like every single day around that. And then Amelia, one of our support coaches in Six Figure Circle also got the spicy cough. And, you know, that could have been a shit show. Like that could be something where you'd be like, oh, wow like two thirds of our coaching team for this particular mastermind are down. And we laughed about it. We immediately shared a note with our six figure circle clients with you, Charlotte, and uh, shared like, just letting you know, this is where we're at. It's not going to impact anything except some one-to-one calls that we need to shift and change. Um, Our apologies, you know, this is, it is what it is. And whenever we do things like that in business, because we're working with people who are also in business, what I find is that it's actually so permission giving of, oh, okay, you're modeling like how this gets to look because, you know, this could feel like something that would be really scary if this were to happen. And what would that look like in my business? And, you know, we're laughing about it behind the scenes. I mean, I said to Nivek, who's our third coach, I was like, uh, please don't leave the house. And I was like, just kidding. And he said, you're not kidding though, are you? And I was like, I'm really not. Do you have to leave the house? Like, is there anything you need to do? Because I don't know what would happen if you went down as well. And so, you know, like we're all human. We're all, I was like, oh shit, what are we going to do? But you make it work. And, and I think that the, the kind of overarching theme I think I'm feeling from what we're chatting about right now is that in work, as is with nature and our natural rhythms, there has to be a flow and a fluidity. There just has to be because you are not going to be able to to thrive, create, show up, do any of the things that you want to do in business if you're feeling any kind of rigidity. My puppy really agrees. You can hear her. (laughs) Hey, hello. (laughs) Obviously dogs going past outside. So you're getting both of us right now in this moment. She's been on many podcast episodes over the last eight months. What kind of bark? Building Uh, a profile. (laughs) 
<laughs> so bad. I love um, it. But yeah, it's it's that flow and fluidity that's so important when you are building something something big and um, allowing yourself to play with the the ever present nature of flow mm. um, is is just so incredibly important. Otherwise, you will drive yourself mad. You will become incredibly stressed, um, and it just won't work. And so, you know, got to keep a sense of humor, got to allow things to be light, got to allow things to change. Totally. We, you and I were talking about it off air before, right? You know, you've had sick kids. It's, it would be so challenging to run the incredible business that you run. I'm sure if you didn't go, okay, I just got to pivot and like <laughs> redirect right now. It just, I mean, last week I had I had, it was the day, was it the day before my period or the first day? And I had a migraine and a very sick child. We ended up taking her to hospital with croup. She couldn't breathe um, over midnight. And then the next day I was just paying for it. So she was home. I obviously had to cancel my day at the last minute and shift some things around. And then I had a Zoom call the next night. And I just could not even think about showing up. I just would not have even been able to do it. So I was like, I kept pushing on, I kept pushing on. And then like, it got to like, you know, an hour or two beforehand. And I just thought, you've got to pull the pin on this because you're not doing anyone any favors. If you request people to take their time, they're going to show up and you are not really going to be able to hold the space. So I just messaged everyone and, and said, you know, I I can't do this. I need to cancel. Um, we can postpone till next week or you can come to the second call that we had scheduled for the following night and we can just all get together and I'll facilitate it differently. I'll just, just make it work, right? And everyone was so, um, so kind and so understanding and compassionate and like absolutely... Um, willing to do whatever was necessary just to be accommodating um and also I got a lot of comments and I always do when something like this happens because that was not the first time something like this has happened and it was thank you for role modeling and giving permission and honoring your body and doing what you need and being with your family and I was going to show up too, but I'm actually feeling like I'm on day one, someone said, and I actually just really need to go to bed. I can't, can't really make it. I was just going to come anyway, but actually, thank you for the nudge. I'm actually going to go and do what I need. And I was just like, that in itself is a really lovely outcome. And I thought, oh, you know, every time I cancel something, (laughs) I love cancelling. I know that sounds terrible in its in that single sentence. But when I have to cancel or postpone something, when I'm in that energy of, oh, but you just have to do this. If you don't do it, it's all gonna fall to shit. The moment I go, actually, I just really need to do this differently. It always works out beautifully, magically, even better than I could have imagined sometimes. And it also feels so relieved. I'm just like, oh, it's such a weight off my shoulders. And everybody is just like, I get it. Totally get it. Like, thank you. Actually, thank you for doing that. And it's so funny because I think we get into such a tiz about things like that. We absolutely do. And so, yeah, as you say, when you create that permission for yourself, you allow others to do the same, right? And so Mm -hmm. I, I think that's so important to remember in taking this action, what permission am I giving to other people? What example am I setting for other people? And for those of us that identify as leaders, it can be extra empowering to really, really own that. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I want to ask you, because I'm really curious, one of the things that you really, um, I guess, like I was going to say teach on, like coach on, like support, is um, is mindset. So like CEO mindset, like we're just talking about like leading. And I'm curious how you, um, whether you feel like your menstrual cycle like really kind of influences um, that mindset in terms of like how you how you show up, like some of the decisions you make um, and even kind of how you hold space for clients because I find I can be a different space holder at different points in my cycle. And whether you... Um, 
like how you support your own, I guess, mindset across your cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So I trust in my mindset and my way of showing up no matter where I'm at in my cycle. And something that really supports me is that ever-present trust and faith of how I'm showing up in the world today is how I'm meant to show up in the world today. Therefore, every exchange that I have in my life and in my work is simply meant to be from this space. So yes, I absolutely prefer being a CEO when I'm in the mid part of my cycle. I come off client calls and I'm like, killed it today. (laughs) Amazing. That coaching, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, And, you know, I absolutely come off calls uh, at other parts of my cycle where I go, okay, that didn't necessarily feel like my best work. But knowing that I'm human, knowing that I'm a cyclical being, knowing that that is part of my magic allows me to to always just view it as I just trust that this is the energy that is most meant to be exuded out into the world today. And so because I view it through that lens, it allows me to just have so much faith. So for example, you know, I've got two coaching calls today. I feel very, very equipped to handle anything that could come through in those calls today in this season. Uh, I might be, you know, really close to getting my period or have my period and be on a call where a client's navigating something really challenging because as you know, like I'm a business coach and I work with clients at all stages of their journey. And so on any given day, I'm experiencing wins and celebrations and I'm experiencing messy middles because all of it happens in business as, as you know, so well. Um, And so that's just a part of my reality. And if I'm feeling a little less equipped to handle it, which is usually my reality around that time, I just give myself the opportunity to step back, take a deep breath and and untangle myself. You know, it, it can be really easy to create a bit of that entanglement, which is something that I'm always mindful of not doing as a coach. And so just untangling myself, stepping back, coming back to how it is that I know I can best serve. I rely a lot on my body of knowledge. So I come back to, you have a body of knowledge, you have information, you have experience, you know how to to support someone through this, but it might look different. So it might be much easier for me to really empower somebody midway through their cycle I might anchor more into like deeper compassion when I'm, you know, bleeding or, or close to. And so just not making that wrong is, mm. is the biggest thing for me. I don't make anything wrong. If I've had, um, if I ever have moments where, so, so with clients, I, I can't think of a time where I've ever, you know, wanted to apologize for not handling something. There's always that, um, there's always that element of, you know, stepping back before I before I speak when I coach, but I can absolutely think of times where I've said to my team, for example, hey, I was a little bit snippy with you today. I'm really sorry about that. Um, and so if ever that's come up for me, like just really owning that. Um, I also don't coach in a way where I have any kind of like guru complex. complex. So mm. as you know, <clears throat> uh, the way I coach is, a mix of um, like coaching and mentoring and the mentoring is very consultative with you. So as you know, Charlotte, we might have times where it's like you say, I'm feeling this and I'm like, what about this? And you go, no way. That just feels so gross. And there might be times where I like challenge you on that or, or maybe I go, look, I really hear you. What about this instead? Like it, it's very, um, it's very like a two-way communication because I believe when I'm coaching my client that it's me as mentor, but also you and your intuition that is equal parts in that decision-making mm. process. Uh, and so that also allows me to remove any kind of uh, like burden or over-responsibility that I might place on myself in any part of my cycle where I have to have all of the answers. I have to know absolutely everything. I have to show up in, in a certain way. So 
the biggest thing I'd say there is coming back to self-trust and knowing that you're meant to show up in the way you are based on where you're at in your cycle. And that is just part of your magic that you're supposed to bring to the world. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. I um I really relate to what you're sharing, like being on the, you know, receiving end, I guess, of mm. of working with you when I see that and I really know that to be true. I love that you have that approach and, you know, so do I. And I think I actually think that's, you know, a hallmark of of a good coach is not being in that guru kind of headspace of like, I'm telling you. But I really appreciate it in the business sense because you're calling people into their own CEO leadership as well, you know, and empowering women to trust their decisions and their their in, intuition and um and prioritizing kind of feeling good as well, you know, as well as overcoming those moments, like you say, we can all have those blocks of like, ah, self doubt, imposter, fraud, I can't, I'm not enough, what if, what if, etc. Um and yeah, I really see you doing that, um, that, you know, really using your intuition to sense, is this, is this genuine or is this, is this a fear that, you know, a limiting belief that's, that's there. So yeah, I really hear how you experience, um, being in the coaching seat and the leadership seat in different phases of your cycle. And, um, you know, I guess I could just share my experience on that Mm -hmm. is that, you know, you will know, we've, we've had these conversations. When I'm ovulating, um, I started naming her Sassy Charlotte comes out to play. And we had, you know, Charlotte. we've had such a good giggle about this. But yeah, I'm in this really like high, like extremely extroverted, resilient, buoyant energy of just like, I can do anything. Whoop, like, this is just fun. Um, life's a party, like, everything just feels, I just laugh a lot (laughs) as well. And I kind of laughing at myself, just like observing it almost in this like witness seat of like, look at you, like, this is such a funny, like, who are you? But it's, it's a really strong energy of, you know, in business of being um, like anything feels possible. Mm. And I feel really confident and I really believe the evidence that's around me and I, and I'm able to receive support and I guess compliments as well. Uh, You know, like if you're saying like you're doing this well or that, you know, this is going well and you look at the evidence that you've got to, to support that, you know, you're not making it up. You're just pointing out what's there and I can go, yeah, you're right. Whereas at other times of my cycle, particularly I struggle as well in business in my late autumn phase the premenstrual phase like this completely different version of me comes out and it's only for a few days and it is right before my period um where I like turn into like this nervous wreck almost of like like I feel like I'm kind of shrinking and going like ah victim mode it's like victim mode comes out like this isn't working. Nobody's paying attention. Nobody's interested. Like, why am I even doing this? And I'm going like, that's such BS woman, but I can see it because it's a pattern. And so really getting familiar with what my mindset is in that time, um, is so helpful because instead of just, you know, losing the will to do anything. I just like, you're just in that point. This means your your period's coming. You're going to be bleeding and you will not feel like this again. And this is not true. Look at what's going on for you. And so I I like to kind of intentionally evidence gather at that point to be like, you know, call myself out on it essentially with, with lots of love and compassion. But I also really like to journal at that point of, everything that I'm fearing, all my fears. It's like, I'm scared of this and I'm scared of that. And you know, why, like what's underneath it and what's underneath it and what's underneath it. And it might be like, you know, I don't want to do this because ultimately, and it always comes back to like a sense of shame about something. Like if this doesn't work, then I'm going to feel a sense of shame. And it just comes up for me every single time. So, um, you know, having, having you there and the team there to support me is just been 
you know, since I started working with you last year, like my business has changed pretty big time. Um, so thank you. But, you know, having that support and your, um, like the community you build really brings me up and shows me what's possible and encourages me and having, you know, having you kind of reflecting back to me as well, like, you know, look at, you know, what you're doing and how it's going and also the strategy. Yeah. And the strategy of like, well, this is what we're going to do next. It's been really, um, really, really powerful. So yeah, thank you. I, I, um, yeah, I just want to take a moment to say thank you. But um, I just love that conversation as well about, you know, how our cycle impacts our, how we show up as well, you know, in, in our, for ourselves and for our business and kind of in that leadership space, that CEO space. So yeah, it's really useful for me to reflect on as well. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, you know, I, I've told you this before many times, but I just adore coaching you. And I think that um, one of the reasons you make it so easy is because of that openness to to look at things differently and to to play and to go, is this fear? Is this truth? And just like having no charge around that, you know, just allowing it to be like an open conversation of, is this fear? Is this an excuse? Is it not? Um, because it's really when we attach charge or we start getting in our ego around it, that we start putting up these walls that allow us to be, or that, that make us kind of less coachable. Right. Mm. Um, and so I, I love that. And just to speak to that, and I'm, I'm sure this is something you do too. And I know you always ask your clients where they're at in their cycle, but that's always something that I'm factoring in when I'm supporting my clients. So I, I often speak to this point of like, your feelings make for a pretty shitty CEO, you know, um, like, you know, Charlotte, that if you ran your business based on your feelings, you would perhaps be changing your business at like four different times throughout your cycle, because we probably have a different version of how we want our business to ultimately look in the different seasons that we're in. And so coming back to it, another point around CEO mindset there is that if we always remember that our feelings make for a shitty CEO, then we have the opportunity to remove ourselves from those feelings and instead make decisions based on what we know is best for our business, because we're making decisions based on what is best for our business and what is ultimately best for us overall, then we're going to have the opportunity to, to really create something that is going to sustain us throughout our cycle. You know, it might be that you have moments where your business feels a bit shittier. It might be moments where it feels way more joyful, but ultimately you want to have a business where you know your baseline is that it's going to feel good to run that business the majority of the time, which means, you know, that maybe if you're making a big decision about your business model, that you want to allow yourself to ruminate on that for your next cycle. Like that Mm -hmm. is totally okay to do that. Um, You know, knowing that you've got full permission to do that. And so knowing that that's, that's a thing. If I feel like somebody, if I feel (laughs) like somebody is coming into a coaching session, all up in their feelings, then we will, we will separate from that. Like we'll, we'll look at how do we extract how we are feeling as the person, which is all so incredibly valid from where we're at in the business, knowing that when we create that separation, that's when we can really dive into best next steps and and what we need to do in a way that's going to support both the business and yourself. Mm, I love that point. And I think that's what I've really found helpful from you, Ellie, is I've been reflecting on this for a while, but like I'm very um, like feelings led, like, hello, that's like me and how I work, right? That's, That's the whole thing. Um, so when I'm coming into like putting my CEO hat on, like I do have to do that whole, like, okay, how are you feeling? Like, okay, so where are you at in your cycle? Like, how is this impacting you? Like, is this, is this logical or are you just kind of getting swayed? Like you say, and what I've, what I've found is because I, um, like coach and, you know, support people to connect with their feelings and, do that myself is, you know, I'm very in that kind of feminine energy is that you bring 
like a balance of feminine, the feminine and masculine, like that structure, that container, that like both are welcome, like feelings are welcome, but so is strategy and logic and, um, you know, more of a kind of planned, um, sense that we we need both don't we like you say we can't just we can't just play in one it needs to be this kind of this dance between the two and yeah you've really given me that that edge to that that kind of I really welcome in that that masculine sense of the energy as well from the the container and the format and that kind of yeah just countering I think you know to to balance me out a little bit I love that so much. Thank you so much for sharing that. And that is such an aim for me as a coach. So I really appreciate those words. Mm, Thank you. Well, lovely. I am going to let you go. We've had such a beautiful conversation and I've really loved hearing you speak about, you know, your cycle, your cyclic approach to being in your business and showing up and um, kind of welcoming me and everyone listening kind of into that that layer deeper um it's just you know I've really taken a lot from what you've said about how you run your business and how you support yourself and I hope everyone else does too I'm sure they will so can you just share with us um where people can find you if they don't already know you but you know I'm sure uh, yeah everyone will want to come over and find you I would love that so much. So if you're a podcast listener, then um, I have Shine Online with Ellie Swift is my podcast. Would love for you to come on over and listen to that podcast. We talk all things business, obviously. Uh, in addition to that uh, podcast, you can find me uh, on Instagram at Ellie H. Swift. Uh, jump on over and tell me what you loved most about this episode. I really love having conversations there. All the conversations in DMs are with me directly. Um, and so please do jump over and share uh, what you loved most about this episode. And when's this podcast getting released? Is it in the next? Good few- question. In the next few weeks. Yeah. I can't okay. see the date out the corner of my eye from here. Soon. Well- if it's, if it's before the end of March, then I would love for you to check out as well. I've got a program running at the moment called world-class business. And the reason why I mention it is because it actually really relates to a lot of the conversations that we've been having here. So it's a two week program where I support you to share the systems and the structures that I've used to build my business um, so that you can create more of that creativity and flow that you really most want to live into each day. So would absolutely love to support you with that. It's super low cost. Um, and it's going to be really awesome. So yeah, jump on over and check that out. Amazing. Thank you. Go over and check out Ellie's work. She's amazing. And I've, yeah, like you, you've heard in this conversation, I've got so much out of working with her and learning from her. So thank you, Ellie. Have a beautiful day. Yeah. You too. Big love to you. Thank you so much for listening in. If you're loving this podcast and you'd love to help me spread the wisdom shared, please leave a review or rating or share this with somebody who you think would love to listen in. I'm really passionate about creating ripples of change and getting this information to more women, girls and people with a cycle so that they can reclaim their cyclic natures too. And if you'd love to dive in deeper with learning more about how to connect with your cycle and rites of passages, come and join our free Wild Flow Circle community or choose a course and learn with me on my online learning hub. All the links are in the show notes. And until next time, be well and go with the flow of your cyclic nature.